What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we'll be breaking down the season and doing a review on the season for Io DeSumo. We'll also be talking about a new rumor that's popped up of Portland reportedly having some serious interest in Zach Levine. Is it from reputable sources? Is it anything that we should be worried about? I'll talk about all that and more on today's Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, beautiful people. Uh, first, I want to, I, we have some rumors when it comes to Zach Levine. And so this has actually come out from somebody who is, is a pretty reputable source in general. This one comes from Brian Windhorst, who says that there are some serious talk going around NBA execs that there may be some interest from the Trailblazers in, in Z- going after Zach Levine. Now, he says that it's that the exact words were it's popped up um, as a potential landing spot. So that's that's not nothing to worry about too much. It raises a lot of questions on, you know, by signing Zach Levine or attempting to sign Zach Levine, the Portland Trailblazers just really put themselves almost just exactly where they were with having C.J. McCollum next to Dame Lillard. I would think that that team, especially if they're going to spend that amount of money, would do something to kind of really change that team dynamic, especially when they already have Anthony Simmons. Now, we'll see. Um, again, I've just mentioned it as something to, <coughs> to uh, have a conversation about. If you guys want to hear it yourself, he mentioned it on the Hoop Collective podcast around the 22-minute mark, so go and check that out. Let me know how you guys feel about that down below. Like I've said before, I'm not really too worried um, when it comes to Zach Levine potentially leaving the Chicago Bulls. And I've I've said this before many times, it could come back to bite me, um, could come back to bite the Bulls, but with everything, I know Zach Levine's comments have, you know, started and raised some question marks, but I really don't. I really don't worry about it. Um, you know, looking at Portland's cap space now, they could theoretically clear up to about forty-eight point four million dollars in cap space. Uh, that would come from they would have to renounce the cap holds for Joe Ingles, uh, Nurkic, and Anthony Simmons. So that would basically mean that if they were to try to pursue Zach Levine and clear enough money to really go after Zach Levine, uh, that they would lose their uh, bird rights to kind of re-sign Anthony Simmons. And, and Nurkic. So, you know, especially when you have Anthony Simmons, a younger player who they don't really, I mean, they've shown a lot of faith in. Are they going to renounce the rights to a player like Anthony Simmons? Um, You know, it, again, I want to hear from you guys on this. What do you think? Do you What do you think about the chance that that may happen? I'm looking at it as really like, you know, it's probably something that, especially when you hear up, it's popped up by NBA execs. It's probably just, you know, conversation. Hey, do you know that they could possibly do this? I don't know if it's necessarily something that is is solidified or if it's any direct interest and if it's just kind of execs talking amongst themselves and some of the things that could happen in this offseason but want to hear from you guys on it do you believe it is it something that you're worried about how do you feel overall with Zach Levine leaving do you think that it's more of a chance that he stays more of a chance if he goes let me know all that down below but let's get into the meat and potatoes the main topic of today's episode that we came here to discuss and that is the season of Io DeSumo the Bulls second round pick out of Illinois Chicago's very own Io DeSumo, a player who's really, while hitting the rookie wall later in the season, really shined and dazzled quite heavily in the Chicago Bulls season, especially early on. And, you know, just to go over some raw numbers with uh, Io DeSumo, again, we, as we know, numbers aren't everything, but I've talked about them every step of the way here since I've been doing these season reviews. And so Io DeSumo's season, oh man, Io DeSumo's season has been, uh, he averaged 8.8 points, and that's on 50% shooting from overall from the field, 37 points, uh, 37.6% from the three-point range, and 67.9% from free throw range. Definitely want to see him up those free that free throw percentage, definitely. He also averaged 2.8 rebounds and 3.3 assists uh, per game, and almost a steal per game as well at 0.8. Those are solid stats, especially when you look at how he was used early in the season, not getting a ton of minutes. I, always, I When you really look at Io's season and as it progressed, he earned every minute, every increase in minutes that he got over the course of the season, he earned them. He started off getting spot minutes mainly because of his defense. Uh, he was trusted to do more playmaking as things went along. And one thing that we haven't seen with Io is really his offensive game come around. He was a scorer in college and so the fact that i think in his last season in illinois he averaged over 20 points he averaged 16.7 points 
uh, per game in, in his college, in his collegiate career. So there's more to scratch on that surface on Io's offensive game. Now, how that comes along in the NBA and how that comes along, especially coming off the bench, can really change the dynamic for the Chicago Bulls very heavily. When you look at Alice Caruso, who is probably going to be our main player coming off the bench, you know, I, I we know Alice can, uh, can Alice can score some, right? But he's not necessarily a scorer. He's out there to do energy, defense. He's going to hit open shots, things like that. Io DeSumo has the potential to really be a bench scorer and probably a more efficient one than even what we got in, in Kobe White. And, you know, that's led to a lot of the speculation on what's going to happen with Kobe White uh, heading into next season. Do the Bulls move him? Because if they can free up and if Io's uh, offense matures a lot more to where we get more of that offensive game from Io DeSumo, you know, the sky's really the limit for him. I really do think that we're going to see more of that offensive game. I would not be surprised at all if Io next season averages 10 to 12 points off the bench. Again, depending on how the minutes work out, depending on, on how many minutes they get him, depending on everybody else being healthy. One of the things with this season with Io DeSumo that impressed me so much is how he was able to step up and, 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 and play a different role than what he came into the season. One of the things that a lot of people have brought up to me, and I've said as well, I have to hold myself accountable. In my preseason preview for Io DeSumo, I said I didn't think Iowa was going to get a lot of minutes. I thought Iowa was going to get a lot of um, G League time, and you know I I think I even quoted in saying, "Hey, if Iowa's getting a lot of minutes in this season, something's probably gone terribly, terribly wrong for the Chicago Bulls, or or it's gone extremely right for him and his development, and we got a steal." And both of those things were kind of true, as we saw Iowa's minutes increase and him even moving to the starting lineup is because things did go really, really bad for the Chicago Bulls with injuries, with COVID, things like that. But it wasn't because of just that Io earned those minutes and his defense. I, we know what I, I and Io got cooked sometimes. Maxi really owned Io DeSumo a lot, a lot in their in their matchups and other and other um, marquee point guards really did give him something. But what we saw from Io as a second round rookie defensively, yes, he's going to get more consistent. The game's going to slow down for him a little bit more. He's going to learn more techniques. And you know what we saw with him. Uh, even in in a game against the Wizards, when in which Bradley's told him something, he immediately put it into practice. Things like that. The sponge that Io DeSumo is, the the mentorship he's getting from Demar Derozan, and you know the drive. What you heard from Io DeSumo, even in his post game press conferences, the little video that the Bulls put together, you just get the 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 energy from this guy that he is going to turn into something. If he does not, it's not going to be because of lack of trying. It's not going to be because of a lack of effort. It's not going to be because of anything like that. Because Io is going to put in the work necessary. And so we all know that the Bulls got a steal in Ayo Desumu. Ayo Desumu's potential is right up there with almost anybody drafted in the first round, and the Bulls really did get a steal there. One of the things that also impressed me, and I talked a little bit about his defense, he has a defensive rating this season of 115.4. Now, that's not amazing. It's not spectacular. I would love to see what that was before, you know, that the, the all-star break when kind of the Bulls' defense as a whole went down. But there was enough flashes from Io DeSumo defensively that you know that this guy is going to be a plus defender in the course of his career. Now, I know some Bulls fans even mentioned at one point, hey, maybe we should start Io over Lonzo. Maybe Io is actually the future starting point guard. And, you know, you never know what the future may hold, especially with Lonzo's uh, knee issues and things like that. You never know what the future is going to hold. So I'm not going to say that that's, that's a no. But if Lonzo healthy and on this team, Lonzo is going to be the starting point guard. But what we have in Io DeSumo is such a steal. And, you know, and I, I, I'm doing, you know, I, I know this review so far has been 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 glowing. Right. It's been mostly positive because of just, you know, where he was drafted at and everything. You kind of have to be more positive than not. But let's also talk about the negative. We know that Io hit that rookie wall. Once he did hit that rookie wall, his shooting dropped. Some of the fact that he even, you know, averaged what he averaged from the three point range at thirty seven point six percent from the three point range. That's a, that's almost 40 percent. We all know that 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 elite once you get into the 40 percent top 40, 40 percent shooting from three point range, you're pretty much in almost the elite standing. And, you know, his shooting dropped off very heavily when he hit that wall. His defense dropped off very heavily when he hit that wall. We know at times one of the things that we talked about is Io shying away from taking some shots in big minutes as the season went on. Now, he hit some big shots for us over the course of the season as well. Let me be clear with that. But he did shy away from certain things like that. But you expect that from a rookie. Everything that Io did this season, I have to give him an A+. Plus. Like, and I know that, yes, it wasn't a perfect season. You know, let, let me give it an A, right? Let me give it an A. Let me not give it an A+, plus because, yeah, you know, just to be fair, because he did have a big fall off. Um, after that all-star break and those last half of games and, you know, in the playoffs, they didn't really use him much because 
of things until, you know, um, um, Caruso went down and then we did see more of Io. But the experience that he learned, the energy from Io, how he talks about it, the fact that he's from the city of Chicago, yes, I factor that in. Hey, it's, it's, it's my rank. Um, but all that being said, Io DeSumo definitely gets an A from me over the course of the season. It's hard not, it's hard not to give him that. He earned his minutes. When you look at like the, the way that he did it with the defense and then he started flashing everything else, this was a great season from a rookie um, that many didn't know exactly what begin or did not expect maybe for us to get this from him this early on into the season, especially when you look at the Bulls guard rotation and how that projects into the future. The, the Chicago Bulls guard rotation, really, because if, if health is all even, right, we have gen- r- relatively good health over the course of the season. Zach Levine resigns. The Bulls guard depth and guard rotation is going to be amazing to see next season. Like I said, healthy, healthy Caruso, hopefully healthy Lonzo, Ayo DeSumo taking more steps forward, um, as well as, you know, probably putting on a little bit more weight. We'll see if he puts on some more muscle. And, you know, there's this, that, let me not say there's this narrative. There's, there's some people in the comments that like to say, no, really one person, they like to say Ayo's too small, but at 6'4", 200 pounds as a guard, you know, with that, the length and the wingspan that he has, if Ayo, like, I always need to get stronger, definitely. And if I'll get stronger, the way that I can see him projecting to be on the defensive end with more strength and, and the game slowing down to him, everything is going to be huge for Io DeSumo. They, they got a bright spot. AK and Eversley, as of right now, they've done it again. They've drafted somebody in that second round who, by all means, projects to be a very big part of the Bulls' rotation going forward. Now, as many of us know, at the end of next season, Io's going to be up for a contract because they only gave him a two-year rookie deal. How that factors in and what that does, something that we'll be monitoring over the course of the season. I hope and expect Io DeSumo to be back in the Chicago Bulls uniform. Let me know what you guys think about Io DeSumo's um, season down below. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? What are some things that you want to see him improve on going into next season? How, do you th- how many minutes do you think and what place do you think he's going to be in the rotation next season as well? All health, all even, things like that. I want to hear from you guys on this. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, make sure you're following the podcast at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to leave us a text and or voicemail, you can do so at 773-270-2799. Thank you so much for your love and support on this channel. Like I liked in everything on. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Media. Break, break, media. media.